Headed down to the neon lights, it's where I want to be, because I'm just trying to make it. You're listening to the Diamonds in the Rough podcast. I'm just trying to make it. Powered by Prospects Live. Welcome back to Diamonds in the Rough. Uh, this is November 8th. We are, we're back for episode three. We're ready to roll. Yeah, we're the number one podcast in the world right now, um, two episodes in. So we appreciate the following. Uh, hope that everybody's enjoying it. Um, keep listening. Yeah. I mean, don't be afraid to like, subscribe, share on social media. Don't be scared, seriously. I mean, I know it can be a scary thing to press the subscribe button, but don't be scared. You know what I say about fear? What do you say? Don't be scared. You heard, That's it what I said. you heard it here first. All right, so we're coming off coming off pretty sick weekend. Dogs win big again. The, the birds, the freaking birds won today. Let me let me let me grab this real quick. The Illini absolutely smacked uh, Maryland. No, it wasn't even Maryland. I don't even know who they beat. It was uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, big win. Yeah, yeah. big win. That's the two. Five. That's two ranked wins. Illinois literally could be tied for the top of the Big Ten, which is so sad if they could have just beat Maryland and Purdue, which were winnable games, but we have the worst quarterbacks in the in the world. Man, I was texting my friend Jake today and we were talking, we were pumped up. We just got the strip sack, the Falcons did. Got the strip sack, scored a touchdown, got up three scores. Well, they score again. We go three and out, and they get the ball back. And I said, We are in prime Falcons territory now. Prime Falcons territory. And we, we tried, but Matty Ice, man, he's a killer. Like I said last episode, he's a killer. Has your uh, date, Mary, kill changed now not, after that win? Not yet, but if the Hawks keep sucking, it might have to. We got to figure it out. We blew a 12 point lead in the fourth. Sampin was there. Yeah. Was he? Watching first hand. Yeah, he was in Phoenix watching Book drop 40 on us. Devin Booker's up. He's my favorite player in the NBA. I have no uh, allegiance. We have the Pacers here, but I like, I'm a big college basketball guy, so I have no allegiance. But Devin Booker is a hooper, and he's my favorite player. Shook, clip this for when the Pacers are in, like, the Eastern Conference Finals so Schnell can't come out on Twitter and start claiming them. Yep, we got it. I ain't coming out on anything. We got it, Mark. So, we're both coming off a wedding this weekend. My good friend Mason Meadows got married. Shout out. They're, they're definitely listening to this on their honeymoon right now. So <laughs> Yeah, shout out to my brother. Um, him and my, uh, I guess, sister-in-law now got married. So, big shout out to them. Excited for him. Were you the Counting best? Counting down the days. I'm almost there. Two, three more weeks, 20 days. Were you the best man over there? Um, I was. I was. Yeah. You, it was a small like, family. Ring, but... No. So, uh, Kate, my brother's wife now, she is uh, a worrier and I'm a jokester. So, I was going to mess around and be like, oh my God, I forgot the rings. But we were walking up. I was walking. She has her sister was her uh, maid of honor. And I'm walking up with her and I go, I'm going to mess with Kate and act like I don't have the rings. And she was like, do not do that. She was like, she's like, that will, that will not be good. I was like, okay, I won't do it. But, well, I'm glad you surround yourself with some intelligent people. Yeah. And well, I, I gave the best speech of all time. I mean, Did you? not a dry eye in the crowd. But I also was crying like a baby. People had to help me through it. I was bawling my eyes out, and people were like, "You could do it, you could do it." I was like, "Oh God, I feel like I'm getting pampered through a darn speech about my brother. It should be easy." But no, I'm super happy for him. Um, you know, now I'm looking forward to our wedding. Was it sadder than when when Maximus Decius Meridius died? No, no, nothing beats that. I mean, that's an absolute warrior. Schnell, Schnell told us not long ago that his favorite movie of all time I stand School, by this was School of Rock. Stand by it. And then we start asking like all these movies like Gladiators, Shawshank, all, like all these movies. He's never seen any of them. Like, well, Lawrence is good okay. at piano. <laughs> <laughs> he shall be rocking my show. <laughs> so Jack so we, Black's hilarious. So we rolled up Gladiator and had, had a good night of it. Yeah, that is an electric movie, I must say. Dude, I not you, not quite on School of Rock scale, but it's good. I bet you're uh, – this is just ridiculous. I bet your parents are glad that they had two sons for going through these weddings. That, that would suck if they had two daughters. Well, I have a sister as well, so – Yeah, they, but in the same month, wedding in the same month would be – Yeah, brutal. that's true. Yeah. Brutal. 
Yep. So All right, let's roll to this segment because this, this is a hot one. Oh yeah. Um, so Schnell, Schnell is always posing these questions in the training room. They I'm a philosophical questions. thinker, some may say. Do you have an example of like a, an easy one? Um, is the S or the C in silent? Yeah, so stuff like this all the time. And people kind of laugh, but then it's like, okay, I really don't, I don't actually know. And so he brought up an AHL debate that was on Twitter for a long time, but we're bringing it back because it's a great debate topic. This is our second segment in a pickle. Schnelli, give it to us. All right. So uh, hopefully we can, in the video, get a picture put up yeah, here because we'll be it'll be hard for everybody to remember these. But you get to pick three of these animals, these groups of animals, to uh, protect you from the rest. So there's one, two, three, four. There's nine. There's nine. You get three of them to protect you from the other six. Okay. You can choose 50 hawks, 10 alligators, seven bulls, 10,000 rats, five gorillas, one human being with a shotgun. It's a pump shot. So it's just for reference. Well done. Three bears, 15 wolves, wolves. Four lions. So set set the landscape. We talked about this because this, this, yeah. this is the big well, deal. Well, which one are we going with? Are we going with the the, the acreage? Or are we going yeah. with? Let's do fifty acres filled, ten acres water. Yeah. So we decided that this debate can't be done without um, defining a, a couple things. So we did one. We picked. We we talked about one where you're on a golf course, it's a 450 yard hole. The six that you are fighting are at the, the tee box and you are at the hole and the three that are defending you are on the green defending you. And then there's a trumpet that sounds and it's hunger games. They sprint at each other and it's game on. So the other one we talked about was a 50 acres. There's water on how many acres of it? Ten acres of it. Ten acres of it for for the good alligators. And it's enclosed. And it's in, yeah. There's a roof. There's a roof. So you're not outrunning nothing. So yeah, can't outrun it. But you can hide. You can run and hide anywhere you want. So so trumpet sounds. You can go wherever you want. Go hide wherever you want. You can get to wherever you think is safest while your animals fight to the death for you. Let's do it. Who are you picking, Shelly? Um, so here's what I've come down to. Human with a gun, no. no. Okay, eliminated. Seven bulls, no, eliminated. Ten alligators, eliminated. <laughs> Just tell us who you picked. <laughs> no, I ain't telling you. There's a reason. So it comes down to hawks rats simply pure numbers that's why they're still in here i'll get to it though five gorillas three bears 15 wolves four lions we've gotten it down to six rats i don't give a rat's ass about them all right so we're down to we're down to five so why don't you just eliminate them on your elimination streak you literally didn't eliminate them just because I don't give a rat's ass about the call them out personally. <laughs> I don't give a rat's ass joke. about a rat. Uh, okay, yeah, you're setting up the show. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. So five left. All right. So hawks are the only air animals mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. So and for reference, I'm pretty sure they can hold two pounds each. So fifty of them can carry two two hundred pounds, and I weigh about one ninety seven. So if I need, but there's a roof, so they really does. It doesn't matter. So I'm they eliminating. They can't pick them. you up, bro. They got those talons. They just yeah, they rip you apart. You. That's the other reason. They they tear you apart. All fifty of them couldn't clamp on you either. There's not much. There's not enough surface area on my body. Right. For a hundred uh, talon or a hundred legs. So what it comes down to is lions are badass. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Simple as that. Warriors. I have a soft spot in my heart for wolves. I absolutely love them. I don't know why. I think it's because I'm obsessed with dogs and they just, they're, they're sick. If you ever watch, yeah. go on YouTube and watch wolves hunt in a pack. It's so sick. And then bears and gorillas. I'm going with the lions and wolves and it comes, this is where the debate comes. And this is another debate is who would win in a fight, a bear or a gorilla. So who would win in a fight, five gorillas or three bears? I think it's pretty That's even. That's Dalton Roach. I think it's pretty even, to be honest with you. Bear, pretty even. Bears because are I, the most underestimated animal out there. I think a bear one-on-one beats a gorilla, but when you put yes. five gorillas on three bears. It's an even fight. It's an even fight. Uh, for pure numbers, because you need as many animals as you can get, especially – I mean, you're going against 50 hawks, 10 alligators, seven bulls, 10,000 rats, a human with a gun. But the humans, literally, you're on 50 acres. Old boy's got a shotgun that shoots 250 yards. Yeah. Mm. So. No, it doesn't. How many yards? 500 yards. You're not killing anything within past 50 yards. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, like, uh, you get hit with a pellet at 250 yards and you're like, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm chilling. So who, who are we taking here, Snelly? It's a long, long explanation. It has been, to say the least. For me to tell you, I'm taking the gorillas. So okay. I'm taking gorillas, wolves, and lions. And I will say I considered taking the bears over the wolves, but because of the soft spot in my heart, I take the wolves. Okay. All right. Well, I have, I have three stances on this. Non-negotiable stances. Number one, if you take the seven bulls, you do not value your life. And yeah, exactly. You're an idiot. Num- number two, the rats were the popular answer on Twitter. If I'm attacking, yes, the rats are an automatic lock it in if I'm an attack. If you're defending, what on earth are rats going to do at four lines and five gorillas charging full speed at you? How are they going to slow that down? So they're out on defense for me. And three, and this is where I think you die. If you don't choose the Hawks for defense, they're going to kill you. What's going to stop them? Nothing. They're going to fly right at you and kill you. There's no, You have nothing stopping the air. So for that reason, I'm definitely taking the Hawks, because if not, you have no defense. That's just because you're from Georgia. That's a stupid answer. I mean, do you dispute that? I'm thinking. You, there, you can't stop. There's nothing to stop them. My second, yeah, but no, the gorillas, their hands, they start flying at you. You got the gorillas around you. They just grab them. Squeeze, smash, squeeze, smash. What you going to do? They can fly straight down on you. Uh, also, okay, here's my, other, here's my other defense. I'm running. All right, I'm sprinting. That's even worse. Right? No, listen, I'm sprinting as fast as I can away, and I'm hiding in a under a rock in a little cave area. We don't have a cave. No, Wait, okay. it's fifty acres. There's just cave on all fifty acres. I mean, there's water. Why can't there be rocks? I'll we, build we one. Specify that. Well, that's why we specify this at the beginning. Okay, back to mine. Hawks are because there's nothing to defend them unless you have the man with a shotgun, which I do not. Um, you convinced me on the wolves because of the numbers and the sheer size. My number three, uh, it, like you, is down to bears and gorillas. Five gorillas is a lot, and they have uh, thumbs. Yeah, they have thumbs, dude. That's that's the game changer. Yeah, the they, thumbs. I th- I think I go the wolves and the gorillas on the ground. The lines and the bears. But you have to are, think are, about are the bears issue. too. Like bears, basically, like they climb trees. But okay, so do gorillas. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying like, like how there's three of them and they're they're ferocious and they can they can pretty much do everything a gorilla can do. You know what I mean? I understand that, but listen, you put two wolves. I took the gorillas. You know how to. You took two. You I put two wolves and a gorilla on one bear, and I like my chances. See, this is where I want to go with it. I want to know how how are we defeating this on the defense? Like, how are we splitting this up? What who's fighting who? 
because that's, that's what I was just trying to tell you. You well, put two. Shit, get to the point, son. I'm trying two wolves and a gorilla on one bear, and so that's three of them. That knocks out three or six wolves and three gorillas. Bears are gone. So then I have four lions to worry about, and I still have two gorillas and a lot of wolves. So I like my chances there. Boom. I need the hawks to take care of the rats. So then I'm left with bulls and gators. Hopefully, I have some gorillas left over and some wolves left over to take on the bulls and the alligators. And then the man with the shotgun is going to get overwhelmed by my hawk army. So, I mean, I, I actually, I, I changed. I want the hawks. You have you to sold have the me. hawks. You, you have, have to, to have the hawks. It is essential to have the hawks. Clip this and put it on Twitter. If you don't choose the Hawks, you die because there's nothing else to defend there. There's nothing. Yeah, I can agree with your assessment. I didn't think that deeply. I, I can admit when I'm wrong, I was wrong. Then this turned to a big discussion. Everybody's like, oh, you got to have the rats, got to have the rats. I'm yeah, like, everybody was saying the rats. And I was like, yeah. I don't no. have to have the rats. If I was attacking, yes, 10,000 rats would be OP. See you later, whoever I'm coming at. Defending, they're worthless. They are worthless. Unless it's a standstill and you're people are like searching for you, like no. If if there's a line running full speed, I don't care if there's thirty thousand rats, it ain't stopping that. Yeah, that's a fact, and so, that's a fact. So I hope that puts your brain in a pickle this early this Monday morning. And uh, if you disagree, let yeah, us know. Let's hear about it. We'll let, we'll, let us know. We'll post Explain it on Twitter. It. We'll post it on Insta. You tell us why we're wrong. And I'll tell we'll you, probably, right we'll probably make you feel bad because we'll dominate you and make and make you realize that you're wrong. But we will be interacting. Yes. So, I mean, you could try and convince us otherwise. You probably won't. But I'll, like I just did, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I I won't ever be again. This is a one time thing. But take the Hawks. you can try. Yeah, have to take the Hawks. Take the Hawks. Not only in this money line tonight. <laughs> Um, all right, so I, hey, I got a I got absolutely ran through on that bet I put in today. I put in a $15 bet to win $33,000 today. I took 11 different players to score touchdowns, and after the noon game, I had six guys that needed to score, and two of them scored. So it was a horrible bet, but I was go big or go real. home. Scared money ain't and scared money don't make money. Remember, Remember that. The greatest for, bet I've seen is is the freaking no safeties all game. Yeah, that was that was electric. It was minus one twenty seven. That yeah. is hilarious. And then I saw somebody put in safety in every game for like <laughs> ten bucks, and it was like thirty three million. How dude? That would be the most electric bet. safety in every game. I mean, you're better off go go buy a lottery ticket. Just no, you're better off just taking five dollars, pulling out a lighter, and lighting five dollars on fire because yeah, there's right. never going to be a safety in every game. All right, well, let's get to the good part. We interviewed Big Beast Alec Thomas, a uh, super cool interview. Talks a little bit about the D backs, a little bit back about high school back in the day. Um, phenomenal dude, phenomenal player. The uh, Zoom kind of dominated us. We lost the uh, video file, but we have the audio. So, don't go anywhere. Lock it in. And we present you Alec Thomas. Don't want it. Need it. <laughs> All right. Today we welcome on a really special guest, um, an old friend of mine, Alec Thomas, one of the top prospects in the Diamondback organization. Alec, no, what's baseball. On, brother? Oh, it's yeah, good. My bad. <laughs> what's good? Don't want to shortchange you at all. Nah. Absolute beast. So uh, <laughs> We're excited to have you on. Hey, it's good, man. Join the offseason? Yep, just hanging out. Um, just got back from a wedding from one of uh, my teammates in the Diamondbacks. So nice. it was good. Yeah, it was in North Carolina. So I got to see some of my family that lives in North Carolina. So it was cool. Heck yeah. That's big time. What part of North Carolina? Um, they had their wedding in Raleigh. And I got family in uh, in Hickory. So it's like nice. two hours away. So they, yeah. Big time, man. Well, being a Chicago guy, I reckon you're doing pretty good. Bulls are off to a hot start. Yeah, I know. And they got my one of my favorite players on the team, uh, Lonzo Ball. So Yeah. I'm How do you team. like uh, Ayo DeSumo? Um, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I've only watched like highlights, and uh, I haven't even got a chance to see him play, really. 
So I've only seen like the highlights and everything. So I got you. Watch his boy. Only been a few games, but I'm, I'm gonna tune into him for sure. Nice. So I noticed you liked a bunch of bull stuff on Twitter. Do you claim the Bears too? No, I do not claim the Bears. Um, I used to claim <laughs> Raiders and recently. So yeah. I, I don't know if I have a football team at the moment. <laughs> Raiders are slumping hard right now. Yeah, I know. It's it's tough. It's tough being a fan for them. Yeah, so, I feel that. <laughs> well, heck, man, I also want to congratulate you on being uh, Diamondbacks Minor League Player of the Year. That's big time. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And like, and like I said, when you got on, it, it was probably like the easiest decision of all time because your numbers were insane this year. <laughs> Insanity. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a cool season, definitely, for sure. Snell's over there licking his chops, man. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I was just thinking about our uh, the first time I met Alec, we were on the area code team together, and the outfield was <laughs> uh, Alec – Myself and Kalanick. So, I mean, we had <laughs> he's about to make his debut. Kalanick's already made his debut. So, you know, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm getting on it. I haven't been healthy yet. <laughs> I haven't been healthy yet. I'll get there. And then, there you yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, even no, across was, the board, that was a funny uh conversations that we had during those uh area code uh trials or whatever it is, but. Yeah, it was good times for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you had to remind you how many outs there were half the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, speaking of the first time you guys met, um, me and Alec played on Team USA in high school. Uh, had a really cool experience. We went to Canada, won a World Cup, had a loaded team. Um, but one one part of that trip that really stuck out was when we had the trials in Minnesota. Um, it, was, it was 40 players, and we were fighting for 20 spots, and we pretty much just, like, had a workout and scrimmaged every day. And yep. <laughs> all the pitchers that were there, and we still talk about it. I talked to Kumar Rocker not long ago. He was talking about that was probably the hardest place we've ever had to pitch because it was all these top prospects you're talking. Alec was there. Kelnick was there. Terang, Nolan Gorman, all the top prospects from our class that year were there. And everybody's fighting for a spot, so you're getting their best. And, dude, it was, it was borderline impossible to pitch. So, Alec, I was just going to ask you, like, does a situation like that prepare you well for the minor leagues because that was that was big time arms coming at you yeah I mean I enjoyed every part of uh the trials and uh I was a part of the trials the year before that too and I kind of uh struggled a little bit and uh I kind of learned from from that experience and it helped me um for the 2017 um trials so I think just facing everybody and and hanging around everyone and seeing where I compared everyone else was like definitely cool to you know be a part of and um and i'm making the team you know and uh it was awesome like i felt like i had a chip on my shoulder because i i sucked the year before so and i'm making a team so it was it was real cool yeah i was uh, if i remember right you were on my team for the trials and i was glad because you were one of the ones that were really really locked in during that time i'm glad um, i faced you so shoot yeah, i'm straight <laughs> flexing my jersey in the back back there no big deal <laughs> Yeah, I know. I see it. <laughs> Got the Picari sweat pack on the side. I haven't had one of those since we left there. Don't really want one I either. I don't think you want one yet. <laughs> no, no shot. Um, and I remember when we were talking and we all were watching your huddle while we were in Canada. Um, you're committed to TCU to play football and baseball. Yep. Um, in my second life, I'm definitely playing college football, no doubt. So oh, yeah. sure. do, you ever, do you ever wish you could just tee it up a couple times? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, my, my, I just got done talking to my dad about it. Like I would, I would love to, to play football like again or, or go back and, and maybe do it or maybe try it out. But I think, I, I think we stuck with the right, the right, uh, yeah. fact, as no, it is. No. boys yep. getting hurt and like you got grown men going down the f- field at full speed. So I think we're all right. Yeah. I mean, the only fun part of that process would be Saturdays. <laughs> yeah for sure 100 percent. yeah <laughs> well uh speaking of your dad um we were just talking about this yesterday he's the strength coach yep. for the white Sox, right yeah and we were watching we were talking about the video of you in spring training hitting the home run and you're waving him down trying to get his attention yeah we were just we were all laughing about it what was it like uh being able to like play against him, him be able to see you. What was the conversation like after the game? Were you giving him a bunch of grief or what? Yeah, I mean, before the game, I told him I was like, 
I'm definitely hitting a home run tomorrow. So <laughs> just, I'm just going to let you know. I don't care if he's pitching. And he was like, oh, Jolito's pitching. I'm like, ah, I'm still going to hit a home run. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, the first two at-bats were – I didn't, I struck out and then grounded out. And then I, I finally got another at bat and um, I had a home run. And, and uh, the car, I mean, the conversation, like in the dugout, like I was telling, like I, I told you, like I was like trying to mouth it and I was trying to get his attention. And he wouldn't even look at me. So, uh, I mean, that, that happened. And then afterwards, um, you know, we all had a good time. My family was there and uh, we were just talking smack the entire time, but it was cool. Definitely really fun experience. Yeah. yeah and that, that video is awesome. If y'all haven't seen it, look it up. Uh, it's, it's what sports are all about for sure. But uh, I did notice one thing about the video and it, I noticed you pulled the home run. Uh, can you, can you tell Schnell how that's done? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe give him some pointers on how to get the ball over there. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily pulled. It was like, like, to the it's right, like right center. Yeah, it's pulled so, like, I, I can hit a ball right. Center. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how, know how to pull the ball either. Like I just like in 2020, like during like the coronavirus, um, at the alternate side, I legit only hit one ball to the pull side, and I was I was like, man, I want to hit. I want to pull the ball. Like I, I, I'm pretty sure I pulled the ball in 2019, and uh, and then 2020 or 2021. I finally was able to pull the ball again. So, nice. well, so the f- I only pulled the ball at one time, and it's when I'm <laughs> dreaming about pulling the ball. And everything else is left field, left center. So, Snell hit eight. I jacks envy you. In the, in the limited games we played this year, he hit eight jacks straight left field. It's <laughs> oh, yeah. pretty impressive, honestly. That's cool. Yeah, that's what you want. Oh yeah, good approach. So, so you mentioned yeah. the alternate side. How? Where was y'all's? Uh, it was in Arizona. It was at like our spring training facility. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then nice like right there. road, we went into the stadium and we like did our games and stuff like that. So, so would y'all scrimmage pretty much every day there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. For the most part. Cool. Yeah. Cause I know, I know a lot of people have questions on how the, uh, those alternate sites worked and stuff and, and everybody's was different. Like everybody I talked to, cause I was fortunate enough to go with the Padres and we, I mean, ours was, I felt like I played a full season when I was done. Like we really got after it. And I know a lot of people were kind of taking it easy. So yeah, everybody was, was a whole lot different. Yeah. I mean, I had a good time at ours and definitely learned a little bit. Yeah. Cause you're facing a uh, triple a big leaguers or, you know, first rounders or whatever it is. And uh, yeah, it was great. Good competition. It was all fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you another question about your dad because Obviously, your your athleticism and speed is a big part of your game. Um, it's it's it helps you out a lot in in what you like to do. But at the same time, I saw you have an uptick in bombs this year. So, how do you balance out, especially like this time of the year in the off season? How do you balance out um, like a percentage you put towards getting bigger and getting stronger, and then also maintaining that athleticism? Uh, I I just think that's like what we do in like the off season. Like we don't focus on on one thing um we focus on all uh, aspects of the game whether that's getting bigger faster stronger whatever it is so um I mean that's just what I mean what my dad tells me to do is what I do so like I couldn't even tell you all the things that I do I just listen to him and and what he says works and um yeah I mean this year um I want to say like I don't know. It just happened. I just think that I just got older. Like we get older, we get, right. I mean, this is how it is. So, um, and people were always saying like, Oh, Alec doesn't really have any pop or anything like that. I just, I would always tell him like, just wait. Like, I mean, you know, we're younger guys. I was, you know, we're 20, 21 years old. Like just relax. Like things are going to happen right. uh, for itself. Um, but also in Reno, my dad shipped me some big league bats. And I'm, I want to say those bats were significantly different from my bats. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> bats or just, or just the <laughs> Reno air. Yeah, but, get your agent, get your agent on the phone right Yeah, I know. I need some big bats. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. they'll help me pull a ball. Heck yeah. All right. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I was, I was interested in that because – we talked about like the AZL and GCL on here before and how it's like one of the toughest leagues to hit in. Cause you, I mean, you've got guys pitching who really don't have a plan. 
they're working on stuff. Like there's just so many factors that go into it and it's just kind of a grinded out type scenario, but, but your numbers were really, really good. And so that's, and you talked about how you came into your power later. I think, I think that helps a player like you when you're young hitting in that environment with the tools that you had and using your tools, using your speed, using your bat to ball ability. And then as you get older in the higher levels, the power came, like you said. Right. Yeah. I mean, I had a fun time in the ACL, like, uh, me and Blaze Alexander, I mean, yeah. we were together the whole enti- entire time and we just had fun. Like those guys, I mean, yeah, like you said, those guys don't necessarily know what, what they're doing, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, that's what I love. So like, I'd be just be patient up there and wait for a heater down the middle and cause they're going to give you one. Right. But, uh, but yeah, I had a good time in Asia for sure. Thank you. So, so that league or that year you went to the, the Pioneer League afterwards, is that right? Yep. Yeah, that league was fun too. Yeah, I mean, I haven't necessarily been to a place where I didn't have fun. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe Visalia. I mean, but we won the the uh, the championship there, so I mean, I can't even say that wasn't fun. So tell us yeah. a little bit about Visalia. What, what goes on down there? Ah, uh, it's it's not it. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, the people the people are good, but like the town itself is just just not a good. Yeah. Sounds like a prison you know, in West I Virginia. Do, I, uh, I saw a dog, uh, a dead dog on the side of the road ah. with like flies and worms. Mm. I mean, it was like in front of our stadium. Like, yeah, what are people doing? You know, so it wasn't. <laughs> where where would y'all where they have y'all stay in there? Are we all in apartments or what? Uh, we had a uh, host. I had a host family. Okay, and um. Uh, my teammate was like, or the teammate that I lived with was, was like a, a 26 or 27 year old pitcher. And he, he, it was funny cause I was 19 and he was just, he was funny to be around. He was like my uncle pretty much. <laughs> so would a lot of y'all stay in host family? Cause I know this year, hardly nobody stayed in host families for obvious reasons, but um, did you have host families at a lot of these places that you came up through? Um, yeah. I mean, uh this year was was yeah this year was just a hotel me and dominic fletcher uh room together for the most part and then uh i ended up getting a like apartment with two other guys and it was all right but um it would be yeah like i'm really glad that the mlb like is gonna pay for minor leaguers now so because we that definitely helps because i was i mean we were pretty much paying to play or paying to play this year so right. it, yeah. it was crazy like we had no income <laughs> so well, yeah i out. think because a lot of people are saying you know well i wish i got paid to i wish i got my place paid for wherever i worked but what you don't right. understand is you, you have a place back home yeah i mean yes. if i live with my parents <laughs> right but you will like and a lot of dudes yeah. will and they have a family so you're paying for a place back home and then for six seven months out of the year you're paying for another place wherever you're at so yeah. it makes it tough and especially like guys who didn't sign for much because a large majority of people did not sign for that much you just you see the guys who did but there's 40 rounds in the mlb draft so yeah it's definitely a big deal that, that major league is going to do that now and it takes the the weight off our shoulders like the first <clears throat> i don't know for us in charleston uh, there were like eight guys that decided to live uh like off from where the team was going to put us and it was two and a half a week at least a week and a half into the season and we're worried about a place to stay while we're trying to play and it's it's just I mean it's not good for you if you're thinking about other things and you're just like we just all want to go out and play baseball we don't have to worry about other things so when you're worried about having to find a place in a city that you don't know you've never been to and play like it's definitely it helps that they're picking it up for sure because it's every year it's been a kind of a shit show for everybody trying to find housing unless teams are picking up um because i think this year didn't a couple teams mid-season start paying for places for people or something like that hey, yeah. I'm not entirely sure yeah. So, but yeah it's it's a big deal it was it's definitely a huge burden off us and like you said in charleston that that was uh because in spring training we didn't we didn't really know where we were going like they they told us the day before we left where we were going so then it was and they and they tried to help us out find us some places and stuff but it's still ultimately you're paying for it so you want to be in a spot where you you're going to pay for it, and it was just 
it was it was a big I don't know burden on us like you said yeah and they're trying to do the right thing like at least mm-hmm. the raids where they're trying to do the right thing but like he said, you find out the day before and then they're putting a lease in front of your face in a place you've never seen, never been. Yeah. And you're like, uh, like, I don't know, like, can I see it first? Like, yeah. yeah, can I know what I'm paying for and everything? And plus we're not getting paid any, like very much. So you were like, I want to make good use of this money. So yeah. it's, a, it's a give and take. Yeah. Alec, tell me a little about uh, Amarillo because that used to be, used to be a Padres place. I heard some stories from there. Um, I heard it's a straight hitters park. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I would say so for sure. Like, I mean, the field looks small and, and plays pretty small. So like if you're right-handed or if you're, I mean, right or left, but I think righties definitely have it, have it made because the ball just goes out to left field, like, like crazy 20 mile an hour winds every day. Um, so I mean, like for, I mean, for me and Nick, uh, like our oppo power plays, plays there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a good time there. Uh, I think all the hitters definitely like playing there for sure, especially teams that played at, you know, parks that are like their home field wasn't that good, like it didn't play well, and then they come over here and their stats just get boosted. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. That, that helps. That's the opposite of Charleston. Wind blows in about 20 miles per hour straight in. It was yeah, center that, straight in. It's brutal. Yeah, that, that's not it. No. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, yeah, for, for him it was. So I've also heard about the city of Amarillo and stuff. And so, so this year we had Mondays off. We played from Tuesday to Sunday. What do you do on a Monday off in Amarillo? Uh, play golf. Yeah. <laughs> play video games. <laughs> There's not really much to do, to be honest. But, um, I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really do much. I played golf like a few times and then um, – I honestly didn't do anything else other than play video games. <laughs> yeah. You nasty on the course or what? No, no. I'm, I shot under a hundred uh, the last time I played. So we're making progress. <laughs> yep. Stepping nice, nice baby. Yep. You swing left-handed. Yeah. Lefty. Yep. God, I can't do it. I had to teach myself righty. I could not, I can't even get the ball off the ground left-handed. I'll top everything. It's brutal. Yeah. I had to I, teach myself righty. It makes no sense to me. I can't. I can't explain it either. I went to Top Golf, and I asked for lefty clubs, and I couldn't hit it. And so I was like, I started getting real mad. So I just grabbed the righty club that they had out there, and I started. I hit it with like a slice, and then I started working on it, and I got a lot better. And I was like, all right, I can learn this right-handed way easier. Right. So, That's cool. But yeah, it looked like. People, uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was saying a lot of people uh, switch like left, like they're lefties, but golf righty. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But in uh, 2019 and then also this year, you were selected for the Futures Games. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Like, that's a huge accomplishment, obviously. That's the best of the best getting selected to go play in those games. And you get to go play at a big league field, All-Star Weekend. You get to see all the big – all the All-Stars, home run derby, stuff like that. Like, tell us about that experience, kind of what goes on and what it's like being around all those, like, high-profile prospects. Um, it was pretty cool uh, in 2019 um that game was pretty sweet I came in off the bench and uh it was like a really like high energy game like um we ended up tying I want to say or something like that I don't even remember but like I remember being in left field like please don't hit me the ball please don't hit me the ball because there's like 20 some thousand people there uh yeah I don't know if I want the ball in the well if you remember correctly you hit the ball the left field in the (laughs) all-american game and I blew that play so oh yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so trust me, you don't want the ball hit to you in left field. <laughs> and you in, in 19, I guess you're probably one of the youngest guys there, right? Yeah, I think I think Wander got me by a year. Oh yeah. <laughs> we were still 19 and 18 years old, which is crazy. But um yeah, and then 2021, Bobby Witt hits a 112 mile an hour line drive that I couldn't see that well and and just yeah, you definitely don't want the ball hit to you like <laughs> if yeah. you're like the corners. But um, no, it was a fun experience all around. Um, we did. I mean, actually, uh, the players did not get to stay for like the home run derby and all that because of uh, I don't know. They just tried to get us in and out of there so we can go back to our affiliate. But um, but it was a good experience for for like me and my family 
um, everyone got to see. So definitely sweet. Be a little taste of the big leagues before it actually happens. That's funny you talk about not wanting the ball hit to you because I remember when we were in high school doing the Under Armour game and the PG game, like Chanel said, it was – I remember all the pitchers just sitting there like, man, I do not want to give up a run on national TV, like be the only guy. Uh, right. Yeah. That's why I, I took one for the team for everybody. I was like, you know what, guys? I'll take one for the team. I'll make the play. I'll get everybody's nerves down, all right? I'll tell you, Denneberg did not enjoy that. No, he did not. <laughs> he finally – I've had to ask him six times to forgive me. I think he finally has. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he gave up a, a homer right after that. With two right? outs. There was With two, two outs. outs. Yeah. So the inning would have been so over. So if I would have caught it, it would have been over. <laughs> wow. That's tough. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's the one thing. I was like, God, I do not want to give up a home run right now. Playing at Wrigley Field. Like, yeah, that was awesome. That's hilarious. Um, I want to go back to this year when – so you you get the call up from Amarillo to Reno. Any uptick in uh, pregame meals there? Um. Honestly, not really. I mean, really? You know, yeah, but I mean, um, the, the meals weren't bad. I'll tell you that much. But um, in the beginning of Amarillo, it was not good. Like, I don't know who was doing the meals, but <laughs> um, it was just we I, I'm pretty sure we got, you know, a ham and cheese sandwich like for a pregame meal. And the uh, other team just got the bread. And cheese, no meat. Like that, oh. it was that. Yeah, was at y'all's home place in Reno. Yeah, it was, it was tough. Like that was that. I don't know. It, yeah, like, because oh. in the paper and everything. Like, oh, oh. no. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys do buffet look. style, or did you do uh, like the individual meals? Uh, there is individual meals, and then some days there was like a little buffet, like a Chipotle or something yeah. like. That. So, we I did mean, indiv- individual meals, and by uh, about the second month, it was like clockwork. You knew what you were getting that day. Yeah. You're like, yeah. oh, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I know what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, and Amarillo is pretty much chicken almost every day or, or, or steak. It was mainly – it was a lot of steaks because they were just just cows everywhere. In <laughs> so I was like cow outside. Hey. Yeah, and uh, that's what I was going to say because when you go on the road – a lot of people don't know you're, you're kind of at the just complete mercy of the other clubby and the other team kind of getting that together. So your whole yeah. road trip. And like we spoke before, you stay in a hotel, you don't have a car. So really the only thing you have around you after the game is the, is the restaurants around you. So you're just praying there's like a McDonald's at least somewhere near you. Yeah. And yeah. you go to the field AAA. and you're just hoping the clubby is, is going to hook you up. Yeah. 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 And trip and triple a, they, I guess it was a little like uptick in, in food because, um, yeah, we got we got some good meal. We got like uh, Red Lobster, uh, like some other places that were pretty good. So, Y'all got the hookups. Yeah, no, it wasn't bad. It was it was mainly no, no, it was it was it was pretty sad for sure. And then uh, I got to play in Vegas, and that was sweet. Okay. And uh, um, had a good time there. I had the girlfriend out there, and. Uh, there's a casino in the hotel, so that was dangerous. Cool. Yeah, dangerous, but I, I honestly had a great. I, I, I came yeah. out, came out on the on the upside. And what do you play in there? We we played craps. Okay, yeah, craps, and I, I played one a, a few times in blackjack, but not really. But we just stayed at the craps table, <laughs> or not the table, but like this individual craps machine where you can like like press your own button and you just play by yourself for the most part. Yeah. That makes for a good road trip for sure. Have a casino oh, yeah. in the hotel. No oh, yeah. I heard, uh, I heard one time, I don't remember what year it was, uh, but that team in Vegas was, had like an unbelievable record after the first game of the series at home. So the first game they would always lose. And then the rest of the series, they were like 78% win percentage or something. Really, which uh, checks out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when we went. I, the only casino I've been to is the one in Tampa, the uh, Hard Rock, and we went there because I had some friends come down for my birthday uh, when I was rehabbing, and we went up there, and it was it was a Friday night, so it was packed, dude. And I was wanting to play blackjack, but it was like fifty dollar minimum on that. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm not. I don't know if I'm confident enough in these cards for this. 
Right. That's when you got to go to a little, I don't know if they have it. I've been to Indy Casino and they got like little tablets and you can do $1 bets. You get on there and you yeah, can that- do, uh, well, that's with uh, like roulette and you can just put $1 bets on there. It's money. He do yeah, blackjack on there. pretty sure too. rigged though. No, it's, it's, they got a live person up okay, on the, the screen. Live ones, okay, yeah, the live ones are yeah, live. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, in Reno, I, I stayed at a hotel that had a casino as well. So you just can't really get away from the casinos in the in the uh, whatever league I was in, Pacific Coast League or something like that. So I can only imagine. Yeah, <laughs> another another reason it's good to to have MLB paying for your housing this year. Yeah, extra casino cash. Yep. Well, uh, you just brought up having your girlfriend in Vegas. So I, I'm going to tell you a story. Me and my uh, fiance were scrolling through TikTok one time, and I'm like. I know who that is. I see you and your girlfriend making TikToks, and I'm like, why can't we do that? And she's like, we can't do that. I've been trying to get her to do it, and she won't do it. She's too scared. So what do I got to do? How do I get TikTok famous? Come on now. Give me Uh, me what I got to do. I will tell you this. Your girlfriend has to want to do it because I I didn't necessarily want to do it, but she made or dragged me along and made me be in the the, – TikTok, so that's how that happened. So you're in the reverse role, so I don't know uh, what's going on there. So. Right. I'll try and figure it out. You need to get, get that dom- diamonds in the rough uh, TikTok popping. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we got to get that get that going. I need to know what to do to maybe we get the collab. views on there. Yeah, maybe we can we can collab on there with the diamonds in the rough TikTok. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Alec. Before you go, um, give us give us. The Diamondbacks fans, a little taste of what's coming. Um, I see Slate Ciccone pitching really well in the um, fall league right now, and I got a few top guys coming up. So, who's some guys we should be on the lookout for? Um, yeah, I think Slade's one of those dudes. Um, definitely, uh, we got some young pitchers that are coming through too. Uh, Dre Jameson, um, Indy Boy, Ryan, yeah, Ryan Nelson, um, Bryce Jarvis, like. Pitching staff looks looks really good. High velocity, good off speed. Um, hitters definitely. I mean, I th- I think we got a pretty pretty good uh, uh, farm system. Like we got some guys for sure. Uh, outfielders, infielders, like definitely definitely going to be something something cool to see here here in the next few years, no doubt. Yeah, and you, you kind of see with the Cardinals right now. Like that's I feel like that's a, a town an area that's really itching to have some like real real good sports. Um, and they're kind of flooding that place right now. It seems like a really cool environment. So, so I'm sure yeah. they're itching, itching to get the Diamondbacks back on top and hopefully guys like you can do it. Yeah, I know. But the only thing is that we got the Padres, we got the right. Giants. So it's definitely going to be, um, a tough challenge, but I mean, yeah, I'll be out there, I guess everyone. Yeah. Be- I'm so. Heck yeah. You mentioned Bryce Jarvis. I wanted to ask, but I want to get him on the pod because he kind of flew on the scene last year. Um, his stuff really upticked with the, his draft year and he looked really, really good in college. Um, have you faced him? Have you seen him pitch? Yeah, I faced him a few times. Um, it was, it was pretty good for me, <laughs> but there you go. But uh, yeah, my first two, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, my first two at bats against him were homers. <laughs> plays. you said welcome so, to pro ball buddy yeah i know i feel i feel i feel pretty bad because the first the first time he threw um he was throwing really he was throwing pretty good and then um he walked someone or something like that and then they got to second and uh he was at his pitch count pretty much whenever i was when i was hitting and then i hit a homer against him and they said roll it and That's that was the absolute worst. Yeah, that was his first appearance. <laughs> That's tough. And plus, he he lived like with us at the apartments that we were at, so I had to see him and everything. I was just oh, like, that's when you get at him. You let yeah. him know, hey, you don't throw that. <laughs> no, nah, if, if that was Cole versus me, he would never hear. Well, I mean, I already am a beast off him. I got a double off the first base or off first base off him. So <laughs> it bounced off first base. Yeah, I hit a ball. He threw me a ch- in high school in like a Nashville tournament or something. He threw yeah, me a change up and I got a knock off the bat. Yeah, that's cool. But but Bryce though, he he um during the alternate side, like um like towards the end, like he was just nasty and I, I couldn't see the ball against him. 
So like he he definitely learned in a short amount of time like how to pitch against um you know minor league or like minor league guys are like guys that are pretty good. So yeah, yeah I mean he's just gonna grow. So no doubt. Heck, I thought my middle name was Roll It in college my freshman year for <laughs> fall, dude. Oh god. Every time I heard I still have PTSD when I hear roll it. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Well, I think Shook, you got anything for him? You got a question for him? Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Shooker. That's a sweet last name, by the way. Can you hear me now? I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Hey, so <laughs> you you scratch the surface, right? So you get a triple A. Um triple A is so interesting to me because you've got uh, you have the 35-year-old guys that are just holding on, collecting a paycheck, and then you've got the rising stars like yourself. Um, in your opinion, what's it gonna what's it gonna take to get that? What what are you working on? You know, different things to improve on to uh, break with the Diamondbacks here soon. Um, for me, like my motto has always been, like me and my dad's always said, just don't be satisfied with what we got now. Just always find ways to get better and work on everything. Really. Um, but, uh, like the AAA experience, like that was cool. Like all the guys were cool. And then I faced like Homer Bailey and, and, um, some dude from the giants, I forgot his name, but, or, uh, Scott Casimir, I think his name is. And, and, um, I mean, it was all cool, but like, like those guys are, you know, past their prime or whatever. And, uh, like there's, there was guys that were really good in, in AAA too. So like. You know, we're just there. We're right there at the cusp of the big league. So um, I'm just going to continue to do what I can to get better and uh, try to get better this offseason and and see what they do. I mean, the Diamondbacks aren't aren't too great. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, I, I uh, force the hand a little bit, but I'm just going to uh, control what I can control. So it's, it's going to yeah. be cool, too, though, knowing that, <clears throat> you know, a team that's struggling like the Diamondbacks are that like I'm the future, you know. Do you, do you kind of view it that way or is it just, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of working while I'm waiting, you know? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that I was the future, but I'm saying that I'm a part of the future, like a piece of the puzzle. Um, and uh, we got some guys in the minor leagues that are all going to be pieces of the puzzle. So at some point we're all going to be there together and, and it's going to be really fun. So um, yeah, I'm just, it's just a matter of time pretty much. Heck yeah. Well, Alec, good luck to you, man. Um, we, we congratulated you on the two Futures games, but we're tired of seeing you there. Uh, let's, let's get you in the bigs. Yeah, yeah I, I want to see I want to see in the bigs. No doubt. Yeah. And then I'll be, I'll be hopefully right behind you, and then you, me, and Kellen, they can look back to Eric <laughs> <the> games <laughs> and yeah. think, wow, what an outfield. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you guys continue to do what you guys do. Um, this is cool what you guys are doing right now. Um, I mean, you guys are using your time wisely. I'm just chilling on the couch, watching TV. Well, the problem is, Alec, we have time. That, that, that's the whole problem with what started this pod. You were playing. We had plenty of time not playing. Yeah, we are coming <laughs> off injuries. That, that's the issue. Yeah, I hope uh, you guys are feeling better now, though, right? We're yeah. getting there. Getting there. Getting there. Uh, yeah, you. dude, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this year during the All-Star break, after you play in the All-Star game, you can come back on. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. yeah you're welcome anytime. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Take care, guys. Appreciate yeah. you. Yep. Have Thanks, a good Alex. one. All right. See you.